Hey everybody, Alex Goff here. Happy New Year. And I'm here to talk about a little bit of rundown of how things went in the fall in D1A Rugby. But first of all, I want to thank our sponsors for this video. Next Phase Rugby helps connect colleges and college rugby programs with rugby playing high school students in a safe, smart, effective way. Hundreds of high school players, dozens of college programs. Uh, are using it, you should be on there too, nextphaserugby.com. Irish Rugby Tours, don't forget, the tour is a great way to experience the global nature of rugby. Uh, Irish Rugby Tours takes you not just to Ireland, UK, Spain, Portugal, New Zealand, South Africa, Italy, uh, France, places like that. So uh, irishrugbytours.com. And also the US Rugby Foundation, which supports grassroots rugby all over the place. Uh, you know, little donations really help uh, in getting... Uh, startup programs, especially high school programs and, and youth programs, playing rugby, but uh, all kinds of stuff from scholarships for talented players down to new balls or uh, teams that need new rugby balls. So usrugbyfoundation.org, go check them out. We also have some other sponsors that uh, we're excited about, including uh, PR7s and uh, we're promoting PR7s. LAX 7's uh, World Series stop and uh, some support from the Panther Rugby Academy as we uh, talk about the program that they have. So check out the ads on GolfRugbyReport.com. And now let's get to talking about the fall in D1A Rugby. All right. Well, was Rugby East the biggest, baddest conference in the collegiate game? Quite possibly. And certainly we have had Rugby East provide the last two D1A champions. So there's that. But also just the competitive level has been pretty easy. So we're talking about D1A. So we're not really talking in depth about teams that are playing in the NCR's D1. But Rugby East has teams from both in there. And we did see a Rugby East team go and win. NZRD1, and that would be Notre Dame College. So there's an indication, once again, of the strength of that uh, conference, and we saw a lot of games in there, so we're going to talk about that. NDC did actually play Navy, so we had uh, the upcoming NCRD1 champs against the defending D1A champs in a conference game, and NDC did push Navy in the first half, and, and the way they do it really is with a, a really disciplined defense and a defense, defensive mindset, for that matter, and also just really effective mall and their close in goal line attack is outstanding. So they took a lead into halftime doing exactly that. So Navy got around that by perhaps being a little bit daring. And the, the, the knock on NDC was uh, their discipline and, and their discipline didn't help them in the second half. And NDC spreading the ball wide here. Uh, yeah, they can spin it wide. And it's really all about how quick they are to the ball and how quick ball allows you to make all those passes. Score nicely in the corner. In the end, it was 50 to 19 Navy, uh, but it was a lot closer. It felt a lot closer for a good portion of that game, um, but a, a really, in the end, a good win for Navy and, and a bit of a marker. Elsewhere in the Rugby East, Mary Washington and Mount St. Mary's have joined D1A this year in the competition, and uh, they're going to be pushing for a playoff spot. Both of them played really, really well. Uh, they matched up nicely in the fall game that they had, uh, and after falling behind, Mary Washington came back and this was the key try. Mount up 13 to 8 in the second half. Center Stuart Duncan powers through the contact. And did his knee touch the ground? We're not sure. Where's the TMO? There's no TMO. Uh, so that's we just have to go with the call. Ruling on the field is a try uh, that ties the game. Mary Washington uh, pushes on from there and carries that momentum. Ends up winning 39 to 20. Uh, but tough game. And uh, tough games are helpful. We'll discuss that in a little bit. So the Rugby East itself came down to one game, Navy versus Life University. Life new into the conference this year, and it really lived up to the billing it, and, uh, and the expectations. Uh, Navy's goal line defense was, was pretty exceptional, in fact. And you can see how they get into position and meet hard runners going forward. That's really a, a big part of how they're successful in that. Uh, this is a try for life, though, uh, and, and you can watch the celebration. The reason they're celebrating so much, they had to work very hard for this. And this try brought life back from a 13-7 deficit, and with the conversion, they led 14-13. Navy came back, though. This tackle at midfield was whistled as a tip tackle. 
And that gets the mids near the life 22. They run their maul, which has been a big part of their game. Life drags it down. Penalty. Yellow card. Another line out. And off this one, scrum half Sean McElhaney, who's been in great form this year, doesn't exactly fool anyone with his break around the edge, but he still gets through anyway. Navy leads 20 to 14. So I told you about the Navy goal line defense, and here's a great example of it. Life gets a penalty right at the end of the game, opts for the tap, and they go straight ahead and check out this tackle from prop William Webb. Yeah, he does get knocked over. He next get, gets knocked on his backside, but there was such a collision. The ball pops loose. Navy regathers, and not long after that, they kick the ball dead, win the game. So uh, just a great finish, uh, so much drama. Life University will see more of them for sure in the spring. Navy had another trophy to chase with the Commander-in-Chief trophy, which is played between the three military academies, and Navy won fairly big over Air Force. But the other two games were nail-biters, really. Uh, Army met Air Force at Infinity Park in Glendale, and this game is where we saw what Army can do in open space. And there it is. Gannon Conrad cuts through and finds Kieran Murray. And check out this pass inside to Colbert Schrichty to finish it off. you got to love that. So Army held on 22-17, and for many, that was a surprisingly close game. Air Force... I just get the feeling like Air Force needs just a little bit more time. The way you, you bring in your players, for the most part, Air Force is a team that teaches rugby to their players. They have very few players that go in to Colorado Springs who have played before. So they just need that little extra time. I would love to see Air Force somehow. There's not much you can do until they become a varsity program like uh, Navy and Army. Maybe Air Force Commandant can think about that. Be a good idea. But they went on a tour, which they have done. A little bit of a tour and then come back and try to push for a playoff spot. I would love to see more 15s from Arm, uh, from Air Force if they can just get, uh, just somehow find two or three more weeks to to build on that. Because that was, that was a great showing from the Zoomies. So we're on to Navy versus Army at Army's muddy, soggy field. They had that very horrific flooding and mudslides swamping their fields in the summer. Uh, the fields are kind of going to come back for sure, but uh, check out this try from the Black Knights. They're not afraid to run on the mud. And here we go again with their open field running. So that's the break from Johnny Haley. Gets them going. Patrick Oglesby is there for the pass. He has some work to do, but a nice shimmy, and he scores. And that try turns a 17-14 deficit into a 21-17 lead. For Army, bit of a shocker, really, considering Army was hovering around 500 in Rugby East and Navy hadn't lost. The Navy is in serious trouble. They couldn't really get through Army's defense. That was the big thing, and so they just thought about using the boot instead. Well, Army handled that pretty well, too. An excellent anticipation and hustle from Tian Moscone rescues this chip and chase. And this one, wonky bounce, it's trouble. Nice rescue again for Army. And finally, though, they get a penalty from Ronan Krieger. That makes it a one-point game, and only for Army to challenge the Navy try line one more time. And you remember, we talked about the goal line defense for Navy. Here we go again. Another tackle, another turnover, and this time they run out of their own end. Eventually, they get into the Army 22, and once again, the West Point defense is pretty steadfast, phase upon phase, and you have to applaud Navy's patience and discipline here. And finally, with time well up on the clock, the mids get a not rolling away penalty. Mr. Krieger puts the kick over to win the game. Well, that tells me that, you know, speculation about Army's backslide is perhaps a little premature, and they just needed to work on a couple of things to fill in the loss of some players. Uh, so we'll, we'll see them again in the winter, spring. and Be very interested to see what they do. Meanwhile, thoughts of a Navy repeat? Well, it's not automatic, and they certainly will feel they have some work to do as well. And uh, some really interesting things coming out of Navy again and, uh, and 
we'll see them uh, again in this video, in fact. Let's talk about the Big Ten for a second. Not a lot of footage from the Big Ten, um, but Michigan State, Illinois, and Wisconsin all had much improved seasons this year, and so that was uh, that was a good showing. It's good news for everybody. MSU, uh, we're see seeing them score against Illinois here, and uh, they made the Big Ten final before losing to a very good Indiana team. Indiana plays in NCR D1, and they made the NCR D1 semifinals, losing only to Notre Dame College, so had a fantastic season. Uh, strongest team there, I think. But the competitive balance in Big Ten is much improved. We're going to see more of those teams as we go forward. Out in the West now, Colorado State and Colorado, among the teams who are fighting to see who might chase after BYU. CSU wins the matchup between the Rams and the Buffs. This is the pick of the tries. Good clean ball. Mason Crater bursts up the middle. He links with Rami Einasser who makes a brilliant offload to Sam Masterson for the try. Nicely done. But BYU isn't really interested in looking over their shoulder at anyone, are they? Uh, they have been playing very, very well. A really quick ball, really uh, uh, fast in the backs and fast in, fast in the forwards, to be honest. But the, the, the key thing is they play fast no matter what, and they get that ball out quickly. Uh, so they have a powerful, physical team that does everything quickly, against Colorado State. Here's what they unleash. So see how they set up the mall so quickly and transition to a rut just as quickly and out the ball goes. Faster than the camera, in fact, to the wing. Gielu Sagala, he scores. And in this game, he actually scored four tries. So, uh, yeah, looking good. The Red River. Now, this conference will come to a climax in the spring. Texas A&M has been top dog for a while here. Uh, are they still? Well, here's A&M versus Oklahoma. They seal a scrum very nicely in the middle. They go around the edge, long-range try. Uh, they win that one. But keep a close eye in the Red River on uh, University of Texas Austin. They've been enjoying some improved results. They defeated Baylor. They defeated Oklahoma. And they did beat A&M in a non-league game. Um, so we'll, we'll see how things go uh, in the conference game between them. It would be very interested. But that is a, a conference that, again, is working to change the competitive balance. We're going to see some improved uh, performances from a number of teams there. Up to the new conference, the Midwest, and that's uh, Lindenwood, Davenport, McKendry, and Adrian. And uh, while we, we expected Lindenwood and Davenport have been around this for a while to, to uh, be stronger, yeah, okay, they were. Uh, it, was, it was interesting to have a look at the McKendry versus Adrian game uh, in the fall. Now, what the Bulldogs do well here for Adrian is uh, they keep the ball moving forward and they keep it alive, avoid being isolated. Excellent job there. Out wide to freshman Espinisa Silo, and he's got a nice step, good acceleration. And then the offload back inside to Patello Vatuvai. Lovely try. Adrian wins 39-17 in that one. Arkansas State playing a independent schedule this year. Don't forget as uh, the Mid-South split up, and it probably turns out to be a good thing for Arkansas State because they can uh, just sort of pick their opponents and uh, change around some of the things they do, but they are still playing some of their old rivals. They played Davenport, who had just come off a close loss to Lindenwood in the Midwest Conference games, and then Davenport hung tough with Arkansas State for quite a while in this game, and it was actually only 17-8 with about 15 minutes to go. Uh, so yeah, anybody's game, but uh, Davenport will have felt uh, like they lost a couple of scoring chances throughout that game. Several lineouts within, say, five meters of the try line that they weren't able to execute on, and it cost them because in the last 15 minutes, Arkansas State barrage of tries they end up winning 38 to eight. This is probably the best of the tries that you'll see. Timothy Gladhar. Gets them close. Great run. Uh, glad he's had a great game here. Uh, yeah, Arkansas State loses the ball, but they managed to get it back. They force a turnover after a scrum here, and then there's fullback James Beauclerk, and you can't see him on the actual shot here. So we're trying to approximate where he is when the turnover happens, and he immediately identifies that they've got to go wide on a, on a turnover. Very smart uh, and good coaching. And Beauclerk moves all the way around, far right, and then you'll see him again 
in the outside channel, getting the pass, scoring the try. Uh, this is a really nice play from Arkansas State. Arkansas State goes on to win the Hornets Nest Bowl against Southern Virginia, so a nice fall for them. And then we cap off the fall with a couple of big games. Linwood loves to finish off their fall against a, a major opponent. Uh, this time it was BYU. And kind of like that Navy versus Life game, this one sort of had a test match feel about it, was back and forth, very tight. BYU had a little bit more trouble just working uh, the, the fast game and playing wide. Uh, certainly had uh, to work harder to get through the Lindenwood defense. And they didn't get the kind of breakaways they wanted. And here's a great example of the Lions hanging tough, getting the turnover, getting the ball out. But it didn't last long. If you open up the door, BYU is going to run right through. And here they are scoring right down the sideline. Good try in the corner. Now... Uh, it's 14-14, late in the game. Lindenwood been trying to perhaps use uh, the boot, and they pop a little kick off to the left side. Nick Hardrick can't quite get the handle, didn't really uh, bounce for him. Scrum to BYU. Can the Cougars get out of it? Well, have a look at the shove here by the Lindenwood scrum. They push BYU right off of it. Referee allows play to continue. Just love that instead of just blowing it up because it's a little bit random. And then Alejandro Martinez Tapia picks up for Lindenwood and dives through. Does he get it over? He stretches over. Remember, downward pressure. That's all you need. If it squirts out from under your hand after downward pressure, that's okay. It's still a try. Referee checks. Yes, try. 21-14. Lindenwood wins it. So we wrap up the fall. Fall classic. And a look at the West Coast. And in the Fall Classic, we talk about Arkansas State winning over Southern Virginia. But really, I, th I think the story out of the Fall Classic was uh, how we began this video. Talking about the Rugby East and difficult games, challenging games, set you up for challenging games further on down the line. Penn State hadn't won any games in the Rugby East, but they beat Ohio State here. And it didn't hurt that they got Dalton Musselman back. Uh, and he is a really good orchestrator of uh, a fast attack. And that's what happened here. Penn State played fast, played open, played exciting. And look at the skyhook pass from Musselman to get this movement started. Great run later on from Cole Steppleworth to get them close. And quick ball to fullback Stephen Hoy. And he finishes it off. That's just one try to show you. But uh, that's kind of how it went for Penn State. They... they really played fast and wide. Maybe more of the same for Mount St. Mary's. It's a little bit of a weird game because Mount St. Mary's ran out to a lead, looked over their shoulder, and Michigan State, as we said, had a better season, you know, more competitive and improved season this year, came right back, and it was about 34-24 at one point before Mount St. Mary's pulled away late. Their outside backs really having a good game. Once again, speed and aggression working. Great run from flanker Hunter Herzog. And then check out the dummy and the finish. From scrum half, Chris Cleland. Well, everybody bought that dummy. Nice finish from him. Here's another try from Mount St. Mary's. They run a nice set move off a of scrum. Evan Corbett to Logan Wild to Bastian Brunello out to wing Xavier Logan. And check out the finish on this one. That's the way to score a try when you're not sure you're going to be pushed into touch or not. And then out in the West Coast, well, uh, a lot of teams in the West Coast don't play in the fall at all. And some do play and they play sort of warm-up games or testing games. Uh, some notable and some we're just going to let them just sort of feel out what's going on. We're going to pick two games here. One kind of obvious for us, uh, UCLA versus Oxford University. Oxford University touring the West Coast, played some men's clubs, uh, MLR Academy team, things like that. They won all those games. UCLA, different story. So a good build-up leading to a line-out and a maul for UCLA. Solid patience from the Bruins here late in the game. And the score is right now 13-12, UCLA ahead. They go through 19 phases with only one or two bobbles of the ball. And finally, they get it close. Luke Marshall picks up and is driven over for the game-sealing try. 20-12. UCLA wins, a really good showing, and sort of a wake-up call to everybody else. Hey, what does this UCLA team 
have. Certainly they have some size up front in the Type 5 that they don't normally have, so that's uh, good news for the Bruins. And then elsewhere in California, St. Mary's, we know that they played this wide open game. Are we going to see that early on? They played a few games where they, they uh, faced uh, Long Beach State, Life West, uh, UC Santa Barbara. We have a little bit of highlight from that game. This is kind of a fun sequence, the ball going back and forth. UCSB kicks ahead. Well, are they going to cause some problems? Well, that's nicely handled by St. Mary's. And they do well to rescue and consolidate before kicking clear. They don't find touch, and the Gauchos come back with a high ball fielded by Eric Storty. And normally, everybody, <laughs> you get you get yourself, uh, you call for the mark. What are you going to do? Wait for your players to come back and kick it clear. But uh, no, Storty doesn't do that. He taps it quickly, starts running, gets his self to about halfway the pass to his support not quite there but hey let's kick it ahead let's tow it further on score under the post what a great sequence going back and forth the length of the field twice in this one that's sort of your saint mary's kind of rugby right there well saint mary's will kick off uh january with a game with grand canyon U university that's expected anyway um and then we've got the store classic, and then we're right into it after that. Uh, a lot of rugby to be played, a lot of 15s rugby to be played in D1A uh, as they move toward the playoffs, which will be in April. So, so much rugby uh, already. And ha if we have a look at the rankings right now, these are the power rankings from D1A. Uh, there are several teams that haven't played a lot or have not played at all uh, who have uh, more to give. So we're looking at, you know, uh, sure, Cal, Arizona, St. Mary's, Central Washington, Grand Canyon, UCLA, Cal Poly, even un unranked teams such as UC Santa Barbara and Cal State Long Beach. These are teams that can easily move up once they start playing, once they start getting uh, results under their belt. So there's so much more to look forward to, but it's been a really, really interesting fall. And I'm interested to see how teams such as uh, Mary Washington, Mount St. Mary's, uh, things like that, how they move ahead in the spring. So thanks for watching. Uh, hope it was interesting for you. Uh, a kind of a long video, longer than I normally do, but uh, just been enjoying that and we'll have plenty of coverage through the spring on D1A. Keep checking out golfrugbyreport.com. Thanks a lot.